Jacob, I'm here. We're going for a drive. Twenty twenty Mercedes AMG CLA forty five four Matic Plus with race start. This thing rips. Horsepower and torque. 382 horsepower, 354 pound-feet of torque from a handcrafted turbo two-liter four-cylinder. And what the heck was that pumped-in audio? Yeah. So the pumped-in audio is now an optional package that's part of the AMG driver's package that you actually have to pay for. It's not an exhaust. But it's based on your mode, so let's get into a low gear, rip through, and toggle that. Okay, so I'm gonna call the constant RPM. Wow, that is... That's crazy. That is fully pumped in through the speakers. Yeah, but it sounds kind of all right, but it's like a little too punchy. Yeah, so there are certain frequencies where I even hear the speakers buzzing and certain frequencies just bother my ears as well. It kind of like drones, but it does sound better than the 35 pumped in audio, which is a weird thing to say. Oh, wow. Yeah, and there's no way that we have found yet to turn it fully off besides going through your modes and stuff and like changing it to whatever drive mode you're in, so. Well, Yuri, we did pay for it, so. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you want to turn it off? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, let's get to the rest of this car. It is fantastic. It is so fast off the line, zero to 100 kilometers in about four seconds, which is so damn fast for a little four cylinder, which makes this the most powerful four cylinder in a production vehicle, even though they also have the 45S in Europe, which is even faster. It's like 100 horsepower per cylinder. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know how long that's gonna last, but for now it's good. And for everyone who thinks a front wheel drive biased all wheel drive system sucks, Generally it does, but we drove these at the AMG Winter Sporting Event, the last gen. They were some of the most fun, some of the easiest cars to drift. Like 100%, this system is good. And this one even has a drift mode. Yeah, so whenever you see Formatic Plus, that is a very special system for very special AMGs. This one has electromechanical clutch packs to send exactly how much power this car needs to exactly which wheel. And it can theoretically send up to 100% of the available torque to the rear wheels. So theoretically, it can be 100% rear wheel drive. However, that's available torque. It's not actually 100% rear wheel drive. Yeah, so available torque just means whatever it can send. So say a car has 500 pound feet of torque, if it only has 200 available, it's setting 100% of that. Yes. By, it's a, by the wording. It's a very interesting wording. And the way this traction control system works and the way this whole car feels, if you put it into ESP Sport, it lets you slide out so much more than I expected. And it is genuinely so much fun to drive. It, Drift mode is way crazier. It's very engaging. Like you're doing stuff the whole time. It's a lot of fun. Yes, exactly. Like. It's not the fastest, it is quite fast, especially for a four cylinder. So I'm going to send it in cliche corner with ESP Sport in race mode and see what this does. So the first thing that it wants to do is understeer just a little bit, but it's really not bad considering what kind of car this is. And now let's see if I can get a little bit of oversteer out of it and just enough. It's so good. You're getting like Nissan GTR traction control sliding vibes almost. Almost, I mean, like, that's kind of crazy to say, but I get the sense that you're saying. Yeah, the system, it'll, it'll plow a bit before it oversteers. Yeah, so the way that this works, it gives you a lot of confidence in the car because you can have a lot of fun with it, which is not what I expected on the road. Yes, AMGs are all fun, but they're all geared and everything just feels very different from one another. And combined with this powertrain and this eight-speed dual clutch, like, man, this thing just rips and it does sound kind of good on the outside because we do get upshifts and a little bit of crackles and pops here and there especially in race mode so it does kind of sound good for a four cylinder let's take a listen to the outside but all the audio you're hearing to go with this footage is from the interior pumped in sound. Yes, in all the rolling shots, it's called the Inzost because we paid extra for that AMG driver's package in this. This is not our car, we didn't pay anything for it. 
So then this being a 45, it is a real AMG because we do have the signature up there. Yes, so it is a handcrafted engine and it does feel so much better than a 35. So if you do want that extra performance, you really do get that 80 extra horsepower and you get a better general feel in a 45, like a real AMG. It's like a 45 compared to a 35 is a completely different vehicle. Just like a, a 63 compared to a 43 is completely different. Yes, like very, very different. And then under the hood, we have some other cool stuff. You see that big old turbo. Yeah, and then we also have a nice strut bar with AMG branding on it, which helps with the handling. So this does handle really, really well on the road and obviously in the snow, which is what we experienced at the AMG Winter Driving Academy. We're gonna keep bringing that up because that's probably the most fun we've ever had driving cars. Yeah, this is like a God tier winter drifting vehicle. Yeah, and the steering all feels really good. We also have all of our drive mode selectors on the steering wheel, which is really nice to have. You do have to pay extra for it and I would highly recommend it. You can click in the buttons to change what they do. You can turn on and off the exhaust. So there is actually an active exhaust flap, but it's not part of that AMG driver's package, but we won't get into that anymore. So since we've been talking about driving this whole time, we should probably get to the looks because I kind of think this generally looks like a baby AMG GT four door. Everything from Mercedes now looks like a baby AMG GT four door. Let's get to it. But let's get you into the driver's seat. Race start. AMGs have such good launch control startup sounds. Yes, the sounds from the outside are so good and the violence on the inside is so fun. And then with my head up display combined with my gauge cluster, I have my shift lights and everything perfectly. It's very, very good. Yes, even though you didn't shift those gears manually, just like I didn't because this shifts so quickly in automatic. Yeah, for launches, proper launch controls, we run it in auto so you guys see exactly what the car is capable of. We don't want to like have our misjudgment of gears taint that for you. And sometimes we do show you shifting manually and how we bob down. Know. I mean, if it's like a Ventador <laughs> maybe too, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're yeah. 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 <laughs> one of those if you haven't watched that yet. Bop, bop, bop. It's nice that it's still there, unless that's just pumped in. <laughs> <laughs> God, I hope not. <laughs> Looks wise, this is a four door. It's kind of coopy. It doesn't have framed windows, which is really nice. But in Europe, they get a shooting brake version, which I think looks so, so sick. And I wish we had that. Yeah, I wish we had more wagons here, obviously, because I'm an automotive journalist, but the shooting brake looks amazing. It looked really, like, really awkward and cool. Like people would hate it here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so starting with the front end, that's where it looks like the AMG GT four door, because it's got the Panamericana grill and everything pretty much has the exact same headlights. Yeah, it just looks like every AMG these days, yeah, which is I, a good look. It's I, just that it's across the board, so you kind of lose out if you get an AMG GTR and stuff like that. Man, I saw the E63S wagon and I thought they made an AMG GT four-door wagon. Like, yeah. that's how confused I was, but it's cool for people buying the smaller engine models. Like, you still get that like crazy Mercedes look. Yes, it almost democratizes the actual appearance so that everyone looks like they're much cooler than they are. And if we look at the bumper, there's actually some fakeness going on on the right side, but on the left side, it's wide open. And what did you find in there, Yuri? Man, we were scooping stuff out. I found a rock and I found a dart and stuff like that. Yeah, as those that don't know, that's a cigarette butt. These things just scoop stuff up, but it does have the big openings for the 45, which is cool because the 35 will have them like all closed up. And it is generally just a good look. Let's move around to the side. I really like these wheels. And again, Mercedes AMG never screws up their wheels. Yeah, this is like probably the easiest wheel to put on any Mercedes and it'll look good. I love the red brake calipers. And what would be the Continental recommended tire? The Extreme Contact Sport. And for winter, the Viking Contact 7. And as for body lines, we are again missing that old generation style body line with like the really good CLA swoop. Like that one had one of the gnarliest body lines of all of the Benzes but this is still kind of all right. And then you get that coopy look, but at the back, it kind of falls apart because that's where it starts to look like almost like an S-Class and like everything else in the back. It's just not quite as coopy, but it's a little bit coopy. It's a weird look. Yeah, and old CLAs had those really cool butterfly looking taillights. These are kind of all right. We've got really ugly bumperettes here. Huge bumperettes. Because North America, we got a cool little wing and then we got nice 45 exhaust tips. Yeah, which are round and they do look pretty good. And Yuri, send those exhausts into Cliche Corner for me. <laughs> Dude, this thing rips so hard. It's so much fun. You're engaged the whole time. There's so much rotation and it's like really controllable, predictable. So like you don't feel like you're just going to wreck every time. Yeah, I have full trust in you. I mean, I do in every car, but this one especially because I know what the car is going to do. And dude, the witchcraft that they did 
to this turbo manifold and everything that they did with their engine responsiveness is amazing. When you upshift, you get a pop. I feel like, you know how we're complaining that with uh, European regulations, everything's kind of getting like not as fun, not as loud. Yep. This might be the end of it for the outside because you're getting a lot of good stuff from it. There's a pretty good balance, even though you are paying for pumped in audio, there's a good balance of exhaust and air stuff. So much as it pains me to say, this is kind of good. So then looks wise, what's the competition for this? Uh, this would be like an Audi RS3 or a BMW M235i or potentially the way that this one is spec'd out, a BMW M2 competition. I mean, I think this, uh, I mean, looks wise, it's kind of... It's kind of not the best. Like I really like the looks of all of those, except the BMW M235i, I think that's pretty gross looking. Yeah, and we'll get to the comparison of the driving stuff later. Yes. So now moving inside quickly, same old Mercedes interior. We got the double screen infotainment with touch screen. We've got a touch pad that can control that. You can still say, hey Mercedes to turn everything on. But the same glitch that we found in Croatia where every time you say, hey Mercedes, when it comes back, it puts in a couple volumes of audio. Yeah, on the radio, which it's been like, what, a year now? And uh, they haven't fixed like that? two years, bro. Yeah, so whoever you are that's responsible for this, because I believe we met you and probably had some drinks with you. Yeah, you yeah. haven't fixed it yet. Okay, and then the gauge cluster is cool. You can put your speed on the left it's got like a weird kind of tack that goes out you can have your other tack on the right when you do that your speed was on the left it's a very nice look in super sport yeah that super sport boost gauge pound feet gauge is amazing on the right and then we got cool ambient lighting and you can like see the led strips everywhere i think it looks really nice a nice fresh take that other manufacturers aren't doing yet this is generally a much nicer interior than the previous gen cla and i do like using this touchpad a lot more than other touchpads in this industry but i do want to do a quick drift mode launch, see if that changes anything. It won't be that quick because how do we get into drift mode, Yuri? Park, traction all the way off, manual, manual both paddles, confirm. up for confirm. Drift mode active. Drive. And send it. That still hits just as hard. Yeah, it's exactly the same. I was expecting maybe some like wheel tripping or burnouts, but uh, no. No, it's just those diffs and everything doing everything they need to do. Great job, computer programmers. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yo, if you're thinking about a career, don't think about like random stuff. Just get into like computer programming. For cars? Yeah, that's, that's where this whole industry is heading. And then as for the rest of the materials in here, we've got this cool textured material that's kind of soft. We've got some cool stripes on the brushed steel on the dash. And then we have a bunch of gloss black everywhere around the vents it's already dusty but the vents as they do in every other mercedes of this generation look really cool okay and then we have rewinding satellite radio stations tune mix we have apple carplay android auto the apple carplay is not full widescreen but we unfortunately can't use it in this model for a weird reason yeah so i was all excited to plug in my apple carplay because now i have an iphone plug it in it's not working i'm like okay i can't be that stupid look at the usb port yuri's like hey uh this thing's been fried yeah so here's the close-up photo of it it looks like water got in it and short circuit or something which is weird because it's next to a cup holder it does fit a small cup whatever it should be water resistant like that bmw that they told us was that we poured water on we don't know the condition of that car after we left it and then your usbs in the armrest don't run apple carplay or android auto it's only this one up here so it's kind of like a whole weird thing where having wireless carplay in a bmw would fix that yes so shout out to the previous journalists that had this car you screwed it up. <laughs> screwed it up for everyone. So it actually works right now, but as soon as we wiggle this, thanks other journalist. And then this one also has track pace in the infotainment so we can record our lap times and stuff to our cell phone because they said in the A35 video, we'd be able to do it in a month. So apparently it'll work for lap races, but not drag races. And we do have the AMG sport seats, which are very heavily bolstered and they are pretty firm. They are generally comfortable, but definitely not close to as comfortable as the regular seats. How about the back seat room? I'm fine at five foot eight and a half ish. I'm not fine at six foot one and a half. So I guess maybe the threshold is like five foot 11. Something like that, yeah. When we're looking for a third host for the show, five foot 11, that is the only requirement. Yes, and here's a measurement of me with my iPhone to prove my height. I don't know if it'll do the half, but. Can you actually do Oh, yeah, you can do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, because it's got LiDAR now. Weird. I haven't tried it. I don't even know what iPhones can do. Yeah. <laughs> and trunk room is pretty decent, and you can fold down the back seats from there. Then we do have a 360 camera in here, which is nice. Everything is very high res. But we don't have the awesome lane keep in this, but we do have radar cruise. I feel like that's pretty much it with the CLA 45 AMG. 
Let's get to the price. Well, this starts at a reasonable $59,200. Canadian. And this one is optioned out to a very unreasonable $80,640. I mean, could you really option this with anything less than it already has? I kind of think you can. I, I would delete the pumped in audio, but I can't because it comes with other cool stuff that I would want in the AMG driver's package. And I think it's specced out perfectly. I even like this blue color. I don't really like blue cars, but this is like a really weird subtle one that'll probably pop. Yeah, it's, it's nice and sunny. It's called denim blue. This comes in yellow though. Yeah, exactly. And it also comes in like Magno matte colors, which are pretty oh, cool. Oh, the Magno matte colors. I know. I mean, every color is good though. Yeah, but anyways, we both really, really like this car. I think it drives way better than an M235i. I don't think it drives better than an M2 Competition. I would 100% take that, but I understand why people would take this because it's a much lower commitment. It's an easier threshold to drive this quicker. And if you don't actually want to buy one and you just want to have as much fun as possible, once the world gets back to normal, hit up the AMG Winter Sporting thing, drive this on the, the winter track and you'll think this is the coolest car in the world every time you see one on the road, just yeah. like I do. Yeah, we are not paid to say that. They, they don't pay us anything yeah. to go there. We just <laughs> had the most fun there. And comparing how this drives to the RS3, I think this drives a lot better. It understeers less, but the RS3 had a better exhaust sound because it had that super unique five cylinder sound. Stock versus stock, this is better, but like tuned RS3s are wild. Yeah, they really are. Okay, so let us know what you think of the new AMG CLA 45. And don't forget to click this right here, which is probably our winter Sporting and maybe our M2 and maybe even something else.